Hey guys, in this video I want to present to you 13 Godot add-ons that will help you in your game creation process. I'll focus on add-ons that can really help you on specific things and thus give you more time to actually make your game instead of focusing on building tools. I also have some announcement to make about the Go Godot Jam 2 that has already started, so stay tuned until the end of the video. Without further ado, let's get started. Let me start this video with an amazing add-on that was also recommended in my latest videos on the subject. I'm talking about Dialogic by Emilio Coppola, a very powerful add-on to create dialogues for your game. This add-on lets you create dialogues with a custom interface built inside the editor. Its main goal is to help you create dialogues and the logic that will lead one dialogue to another. The add-on has a very professional feeling with good documentation and videos on how to start using it. It's really solid and you in actual games. There's a new 1.3 version with tons of cool stuff, so if your game has dialogues, you should really try it out. The second add-on is Anima by Sisiba on GitHub, a clever and powerful way to create complex animation with ease. Twins in Godot are very powerful, but it can become very tedious to use, especially when you want to run multiple things at once or create sequences of animations. With Anima, you can do all of that with much more ease, as it's the main thing it's trying to address. The GitHub page is really complete with a nice table showing you the difference with twins, but also documentation, examples, and even a Live demo. It comes with animations and easing built in, but you can also define your own as well with a CSS like syntax. Just like the previous add on, it feels very well thought of and easy to use. I recommend using it to animate everything. Okay, let's get a bit more visual with this third add-on. Waterways by RNK Lit is a mind-blowing add-on, letting you create rivers directly in Godot. Using curves, you define the shape of your river, and the add-on does the rest. What is even cooler is that it comes with a good-looking water shader with foam and bubbles, and the flow map is automatically generated. It even supports buoyancy, so you can add rigid bodies to your river and let them float. How amazing is that? You have a ton of parameters to play with, and and customize your river the way you want. You can access the flow map from a shader and do a pretty cool stuff with it. As with other add-ons we've seen, it's really well made and has some nice documentation and videos. If you need to add waters to your project, check out Waterways and make those ducks float. Since we are talking about environment and nature, why not add trees to your game? That's exactly what Godot Tree Generator, made by Silent, aims to do. With this add-on, you can easily add trees to your project. Just add some textures and you'll have some nice procedurally generated trees. Combine it with multi-mesh instances and you're done. This project aims to do something similar to Speed Tree, a very well-known plugin made for Unreal Engine. Xylan tells us the add-on is still under development, so you should be careful as future versions could break compatibility. This is aimed at Godot 3.2 plus and Godot 4 is not currently supported. The documentation is light but there's a nice little demo scene and the plugin is simple enough so that you should have no problem using it in your project. You like visual stuff, right? If yes, you'll love this fifth add-on, Godot Volumetric by CI Silicone. This one aims to bring all sorts of volumetric stuff to Godot, fog, particles, screen space processing, and voxel-based fog. It has nice documentation on GitHub telling you how to set up the volumetric effects and what the parameters are for. It's pretty customizable, using your own textures and shading if you want to. This seems like a solid implementation derived from Frostbite's own implementation. You can check the demo to see if you like it and want to use it in your project. It would be perfect for those atmospheric games like horror or survival. Okay, we've done some visual stuff, now it's time to go in the back end a bit more. For this sixth add-on, I'm presenting you GD Unit 3 by Mike Schulz, a good way to integrate testing in your Godot project. The goal with this add-on is to provide a seamless integration with Godot for you to test different functionalities in your game. Basically, you can define some tests with the expected results and the add-on will take care of executing the test and give you feedback on where you are in the testing process and how well it's going. If you're not familiar with test-driven development, this can seem cumbersome and useless, but test-driven development can really help you make less error and more bug-free code. This might be especially useful if you're 
there are more than one working on a project as you want to make sure X change that person Y made will not break everything. This add-on will help you make the process of testing your game as frictionless as possible. If you're working on a big game or an application using Godot, I definitely recommend trying out this add-on. Now that we are in the back end, let's continue for the seventh add-on with Godot SQLite by Too Shady for You. If you're familiar with databases, you probably understood what this add-on is for. It's a direct SQLite integration for Godot, giving you the ability to use SQLite 3 databases in your project. This can be super useful for games and applications that need to store loads of data. If you need something more powerful and organized than JSON, for example, this is for you. It's not the funniest add-on, but certainly a very useful one. We did visual and backend stuff. Now let's please our ears, shall we? Godot Mixing Desk by Kiz Frinton is a tool to make procedural sounds and adaptive music. This add-on comes with a custom node to help you create and enhance your sounds and music. There is a lot to handpack, but don't worry. The documentation seems pretty complete with examples and advices on how to proceed. There is really a node for everything, and you even have custom signals to tell you when there's a bit in your song or when a song changes. Even if you don't need to do crazy stuff, these add-ons can be super useful just to play between multiple songs at random or to combine multiple songs, especially useful to create convincing sound effects. I think I'm going to use this add-on in my game Dashbong. It seems so cool. Mm. You know what? I think we didn't have enough visual stuff, and this one is going to be cool. In some recent videos, I talked about the geometry class and the awesome things it can do. This add-on is clearly using some of that, and that is awesome. I'm talking about Godot Polygon Fracture by Solobyte. This is simple to explain. The goal is to cut, fracture, and explode stuff. Pretty cool, right? There are many things you can do, such as point fracture, cutting polygons, and fracturing them. It's the perfect add-on to make some neat destruction in 2D. You can then restore polygons to their original shape. How freaking cool is that? I can totally see this being used to make some kind of combat game where you must collide with enemies to destroy them. For the 10th add-on, I'm showing you VPainter by Toman Kirillov. But what is VPainter, you may ask? I'm glad you did. It's a vertex painter directly integrated into Godot. The goal of this add-on is to help you paint textures on your mesh with different brushes, pressure and blend mode. You heard right, I talked about pressure. VPainter has support for pressure sensitive pens. This tool is extremely useful to paint on terrains and create amazing environments. 3D support in Godot is pretty good, contrary to some what people believe. But if we are honest, it lacks some important features such as occlusion calling, coming in 3.4, automatic LOD, and such. That's going to be fixed with Godot 4.0, but in the meantime, you can have LOD, level of detail, thanks to Godot LOD, found in the Godot Extend libraries made by the community. This add-on helps you setting up levels of detail for your meshes, helping improve performance with ease. You simply add an LOD spatial node to your scene and add two or three meshes with different levels of details. You can set different parameters for how fast it should update and if you want to see it in action, there's a neat little demo available. Note that this add-on will work only on mesh instance, particles and lights, not on CSG for example. The 12th add-on for this video is Ingrid by Larpon. No, I'm not talking about your grandma. Ingrid is a simple way of creating infinite scrolling games, which is perfect to create infinite runners. You set it up with two components and you can easily customize the grid and the cells. The add-on will take care of wrapping when needed and moving everything. You simply call the move function with the relative movement in pixels. This is a handy tool to create infinite runners. So if you're making one, check it out. The last add-on for this video is called Godot Virtual Joystick. And from the name, you probably understand what it's all about. This is the perfect add-on to add on-screen joystick for your mobile game. 
The setup is super easy, you simply add the joystick scene, set it up using the different parameters, and then get the value from the joysticks when you need it. You have three modes for the joystick, one where it's fixed, the other where the joystick can move on the screen to follow your finger, and the last one where the joystick will be where you touch on the screen. It supports multi-touch, can be configured to act as a directional gamepad, have custom dead zones, clamp zone, and also when it should be visible or not. This add-on is simple but does the job perfectly. I use it on my mobile export of my game Dashbone to easily show people what the game is about without having to bring a controller with me. And guys, that's the end of the video. I showed you 13 add-ons that could help you make your game faster. I hope you find it interesting. And if you have similar add-ons that you want to share, please do it in the comments below. Godot and its community is evolving fast and there's often new add-ons that do amazing stuff. You'll find all the links in the description. I teased you at the beginning of the video, the Go Godot Jam 2 has started. It's not only a jam, but a festival. And each day you'll have videos and live streams talking about game dev and Godot. You can already check out the website for all the relevant information and join the jam on the itch page. The jam itself starts November 18th, so you still have time to join. This year there's also a fundraiser which will help to redistribute to the Godot team, the creators of the event, and even you if you participate in the jam and you win. So don't wait and join us. All the relevant links are in the description. If you want to support me, you can wishlist Dashpong, the local multiplayer game I'm working on. Link in the description. I'll see you soon and in the meantime, have a great day. Bye!